Chris, why on earth would you choose a hardtail over a full suspension bike? Why on earth would you choose a full suspension over a hardtail, Dave? Because it's about the performance. No, it's about the cost and no, money. Come it's on. It's about the performance. I no. tell you what, five tracks, five up, five down. Let's sort it out. Let's get it done. So Steve, let's talk about cash, money for these bikes. What are we talking? No, 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 Chris. Performance, all about performance. No, money, come on. Hardtail versus full suspension, come oh, on. All right, what have you got there? Four, three, nine, nine euros for this fine machine. Okay, and this fine machine is 5,699 euros. So not that much more. Well, 1,200 pounds more. Okay, 1,200 euros more, you mean? Yeah, exactly. All right, what about weight? 21.4 kilograms for this <laughs> featherweight. 22.6, that's hardly any difference so at all. So an extra kilo, what exactly are you getting for that extra kilo? Come on, tell uh, me. I'd like get a damper, a shock absorber for starters. Yeah, a linkage plate and a few bearings. So 1,200 pounds more. It's that thing 23% more capable out on the trails than this. Look, the only way we're gonna find out, we're gonna do a test. We're gonna do a road test, fire road test, a single track test and a downhill test to find out the nitty gritty between these two bikes. You really do seem to be a strong advocate for the hardtail, Christopher, I have yeah. to say. For sure, this thing, well, it's gonna cost a lot less than that. Well, I mean, it depends on the specification for starters. Less because... maintenance, winter. What, one shock absorber? Yeah. <laughs> uh, skills, you know, this thing is the best thing for teaching basic skills. That thing, just sit on and roll down the hill like you're sat in an armchair. No, nah, no, nah. you say they teach you, they, they're better teaching the basic skills. They just teach you different skills to this bike. And if I want to go commuting, touring, things like that on this bike, Chris, I can fit Chris, everything on it. We're mountain biking, not touring and commuting. Surely these two bikes are going to be pretty equal. I can just stick my lockout on and they're exactly the same weight, the same motors, same tires. They're going to be equally the same commuting hardtail or full suspension. Let's get the times in, let's get the times in. Right, we're off road. Yeah, this is mountain biking for a lot of people though, Steve. Yeah, how's it feeling? Yeah, really good. Super efficient, every downstroke on those pedals, I can feel that delivery and straight to the back wheel rather than bobbing around. One thing, you can't confuse efficiency, feeling versus fact. And I reckon this bike is equally as efficient as that bike with it locked out. You reckon? Yeah, totally. But you know what? I think it's time to take this double track to single track. That's where mountain biking really begins. Let's do it. You still there, Steve? Yep, I'm still here. That 180 mil travel so far certainly isn't helping you out on this single track climb, is it? Well, I'll give you that. That bike does seem to be very capable on this type of single track, but I think it's gonna be on this tougher stuff where this bike comes into its own. However, at this point, it looks like I'm gonna be buying the lunch. I reckon you are. Time to ramp things up, time to go even further off road, more rocks, more routes. Yeah, but what about if you don't even ride this tech like single track trails, climbs and things like that? Look, if you don't do that, if you ride just roads and fire roads all day, then you can get a sub thousand pound hardtail with a, with a hub drive motor, job done. It'll give you immense pleasure. Yeah, exactly, yeah, immense pleasure. Do you remember that immense pleasure you had riding up Snowden on that hub drive, a uh, hub gear thing? That wasn't much fun, was yeah, it? Yeah, the problem with hub drive bikes is they just bounce everywhere, don't they? All yeah. that weight is in the rear wheel. Not good when you're riding technical off-road situations, those bikes, yeah. at all. I mean, I guess a mid-drive motor is gonna be way better, mm -hmm. even compared to a mid to a hub drive uh, bike on stuff like this, right? Definitely, yeah. Hardtail or full suspension, yeah. doesn't matter. So after the first three tests on the road, on the fire road, on the smooth single track, I think it was pretty even, or maybe you slightly ahead, but now we've got onto the more technical stuff. I think we're getting to like a, a transition definitely, phase, do you yeah, think? Yeah, definitely. I can see the pluses coming in on that slowly. Not quite there, but yeah. yeah. But actually you just said it, we're not quite there because we're going one stage further to a crazy steep climb. Right, so we've done four types of riding. We've done the road, we've done the fire road, we've done the single track yeah. and the really rough single track. Yeah, yeah, now, yeah. if we take that to the next level, it takes us to places like the slab the rock. and the rock, which are pretty challenging Big environments, stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. And it brings me back to the point of suspension. Now, the point of suspension is there 
so that tyres maintain traction with the terrain. Yeah. If you think about the, the bigger picture, the big absorption of the terrain, that comes through your arms and legs, right? Yeah. When you're going at speed. However, when it comes to climbs, really difficult climbs, you don't want that back tyre to be no. bouncing at all off the no, ground, right? Exactly, I think that's something I'm struggling with with the hardtail, just every little rock and root is feeling that back end just picking up, skipping around, disturbing that pedal stroke as well. I think that's something that really matters. You get bounced around, your pedals sort of come off the, your feet come off the pedals, yeah. and you're riding in a different position to you do a full suspension bike. It brings me back to the to Snowden. Mm. That was just no fun. We yeah. got up there, yeah. but like it was so much more fun yeah. on the canyon, wasn't Definitely, it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was actually a pleasurable experience of that. <laughs> Not as much, yeah. Didn't look as much fun as the uh, on the oh. hardtail. To be it was horrible. Anyway, here is our last hill climb challenge behind right. us, which is a little difficult. Um, hard, yeah, kind of quite, uh, quite complex. Technical climb number one. Round. Oh my God, not there though. Let's go again. Nah. Oh boy, these bikes are not made for commuting and riding on roads. No, for these sure. These are mountain bikes. Yeah. But you know what? There's still a 25k restrictor limiter, so they both weigh about the same, same tires. They're about the same speeds, right? Yeah, I think it's ultimately just gonna come down to fitness. I think we're both above that 25k, both working pretty hard. The bikes, absolutely no different yeah. on the road so far. First downhill test yeah. is a fire road. Yeah, there's a lot of reason why the big cross country pros always ride a hardtail. Well, it's a nice steep and short. You cannot argue a slack head angle, 65 degrees, long wheelbase is gonna be way more stable than that steep thing. Hey, look, this ain't getting anywhere. These two bikes are really evenly matched. Yeah. What we need to do now is get onto some really cool single track. Let's do it. You go pretty fast down there. I gotta take it off. I, do you know what? I don't think that the full suspension was any quicker down there right. than your hardtail. Yeah, it felt you, pretty you, good. You were belting it down there. I could feel every rock, little jump, everything felt real energetic. You know, I don't expect you even felt that on your big no, sofa down there, did you? Not at all. Keeps me alive, feeling fresh. However, I will say one thing. Now, full suspension is there for one reason. What's that? And that is for the tyres to maintain contact and grip with the ground. Yeah. Uh, I only have to slippy. point to exhibit A. Um, it seems to be like a 40 foot slider into the which head. Which culminates in the bracken. <laughs> Any comments? Yeah, yeah, maybe you had a little bit more grip around that corner than what I did. I think you got a bit disturbed by that rock and then just slid the whole way around I the corner. I think you were disturbed for the start. <laughs> Sliding aside, yeah. do you know what? I think you were really fast on there. And I think that bike of yours is super capable. Yeah. That's what, that's what I like about the hardtails, you know, it makes every downhill feel a lot more alive. You know, that full suspension stuff, you can just sit back, plow for everything, not pick a line, just sit back. Whereas that, you've got to be on your line, enjoying the ride, feeling those rocks and jumps. Okay, so after the three uh, downhill stages after yeah. lunch, I think your bike is actually slightly in the lead. I'm feeling that way too, Steve. Let's get into some more demanding terrain. Yeah. Loads of roots, loads of rocks. Now, and it's a place like this, uh, I think you're gonna have far less grip mm -hmm. on the hardtail. Yeah. You're gonna have more fatigue because of all those impacts. Yeah. Um, I think when it comes to line choice, you're gonna probably be going round things where I'm gonna just go straight through the middle of it all. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, I think because you've just got a fork in the front and a hardtail in the back, I've got suspension front and rear, I would suggest there's more parity in the bike, more balance in the bike. Yeah than the hardtail. I agree with you. Yeah, I think with this sort of stuff, 
Um, your feet are going to get bounced around a hell of a lot more, so you don't feel as confident. You have your contact points as well. Um, changing body position, I'm trying to ride a bit more rearward on the bike because purely because trying to get that fork active but not get bucked around by the rear. So, do you think do you think this is the tipping point then between smooth single track and really quite technical, difficult yeah, single track? Yeah, it's definitely not possible, but it's not. I don't think it's as easy to carry the same yeah. speed or the same lines as a fork. Look, it's possible track. to ride it. We're not definitely. we're not saying it's yeah. impossible yeah. to ride it, yeah. but I think when it comes to pushing yourself and the bike to its limits, I think um, you know you, there's, there's more to go on a place like this, the full suspension bike, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, you can push yourself to the limit on hardtail. Yeah, but it but gets you, scary. It does, yeah. but I think you can push yourself further yeah. on a full suspension. I think if you had the same skills on a full suspension bike, you would be a faster rider than you would be on a hardtail. Do you think uh, this teaches you, this gives you more confidence as well when you're riding a full suspension in this type of terrain? Confidence, yeah, definitely. But then it is nice to sometimes pick those lines on a hardtail and think about it before you get there as well. Sometimes I think on a full set, it could just become a bit of a blur. Whereas on the high tail, you're really a blur yeah. because you're going so fast. True. Come on, let's get down the hill. <laughs> Do you know what? This is the last downhill challenge. Right. I don't actually want you to go into this because I think there's a ceiling for what hardtails can do. Nah. Look, they can do loads of things yeah. really well. Uh, you Granted, that is for sure. But on a place like this, I'm not so sure. I mean, it comes back to what we discussed at the beginning. You said that uh, hardtails teach you really good basic mm -hmm. skills. Yeah. I'd argue they teach you different skills because there's no way you can take a hardtail down this section like you can a full suspension bike. Right. True, I definitely agree with you there, Steve, but mm. I will make it to the bottom of that hill, but I'm not gonna be having as much fun as you. I'm not gonna be getting the yeah. wheels off the ground. I'm gonna be holding on for dear life, I'd yeah. imagine. Feet bouncing all over the place, but yeah. I will make it to the bottom. What but... about like what about some basic skills, like weight distribution? Mm. You can't learn weight distribution when you've got a fork on the front yeah. and a hard tail on the back. Definitely, yeah. Right? yeah. What Don't about cornering? Them. You proved. You yeah. proved earlier. <laughs> you proved yeah. earlier. I think it's just as capable, but any minor disruption, you know, a bump or a little drop on that corner is just going to interrupt that grip levels. And as you saw, you went around the corner, I slid off in the bush. And what about braking? The braking difference between a hardtail and a full suspension bike? Again, as soon as you hit those bumps, that back wheel is going to be chattering around, losing grip, losing braking. Mm. Whereas on the full suspension, that obviously that gets suppled yeah. up and just lets that back wheel bite into the ground. Can, can, uh, maintain that uh, composure on the bike as well. You're not just yeah. getting bounced around all exactly. over the place. Exactly. rattling in I think head. you said it there, composure. When, you, yeah. when you're going down through ridiculously hard mm. terrain mm -hmm. on a full suspension, it lets you pick your lines. Yeah. Yeah. So it teaches you how to pick lines correctly. Whereas when you're hard to, you're like this and you're like... Yeah. So when people say hard to teach you how to pick lines, I don't think they do. If they're, yeah, I Just think different you, lines. Different lines, yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah. And the conclusion, what about the hardtail? We're talking fire roads, single track. That bike is really, really capable. Yeah, definitely. Let's get one thing clear though. It's a mid-drive hardtail bike, yeah, right? Not a hub drive bike. Yeah. So I think a good value for money, mm -hmm. engaging. Yep. And as a first mountain bike, hell of a lot of fun and a real good cost, yeah. uh, price point to get into the sport yeah. of e-biking. Because I think those bikes start at about 1,500, mm -hmm. 1,600 pounds. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's good, right? Yeah, compared to the full suspension yeah. stuff. Full suspension bike, uh, they start probably at about 2,500 pounds. Mm -hmm. There is a price difference. However, the confidence you can get mm -hmm. at a riding a full suspension bike is second to none. And yeah. I don't think you can learn full suspension skills on a hard tail. Now, I think right. when it comes to skill on the hardtail, you can definitely be, you have to be a lot higher skill level to ride a hardtail in the same places that you can on a full suspension bike. Mm. Whereas on a full suspension bike, you can have a lower skill level and get away with a hell of a lot more yeah. on that bike than what you can on yeah. a hardtail. And I think that, that other basic skill again is, is generating speed mm. out of the terrain. Yeah. That is great on a pump track. Yeah. That is good in a natural environment, mm. right? Yeah two different bikes. Yeah. So there you go, hope you like this video. I'm sure there'll be a ton of comments about hardtail versus full suspension. Yeah. Uh, for some more uh, out there adventures, check out the video that me and Chris did on The Rock.
Yep. First, we've got Chris. We've got Steve's big adventure up in Scotland, up in Noidart, where he showed that full suspension bike being used to the limits up here as well. Mm. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you've enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to subscribe to EMBN and drop us some comments in the box below. We'll see you next one.